This season of Cancelled Movie Report is brought to you by our supporters on Patreon. But more about that a bit later. Hello and welcome to Cancelled Movie Report, the documentary podcast series that talks about the best movies that Hollywood never made. My name is Michael Campbell, but you can call me Cambo. And joining me, as always, is actor and comedian and part-time archaeologist, Mr. Eden Porter. Thank you very much for having me, Cambo. And of course, our returning guest, you may know him from Back Pocket, you may know him from past appearances on this very podcast, <laughs> Mr. Gus Ronald. Thanks for having me back, Gus. Oh, you're welcome. Look, we couldn't leave you out. You need to know how this ends now. So, mm. this is part two, we should point mm. out. So if you haven't listened to part one, make sure you do that first. And if you need a quick reminder... Here's a quick recap. How are you hurting me for? I told you if I ever saw your face again, I'd pop you one. Cuidad de los dioses. That's right. We're going after the lost city of the gods. <laughs> lost dios? That city's not lost. It never existed. It's a myth, a fable. What's inside this bowling bag? He reaches in and he pulls out a crystal skull. Fine, just give me my crystal skull. I'll wait outside. So now we're in the presidential palace and Marion and Indy, um, they have to get these personal authorization of expedition papers signed by the El Presidente himself. From his readings, he's gone through a whole bunch of books. The lost city of the gods can be found by following the lines in the earth left by the gods as a map. Now, Professor Oaksley once told Indy's dad that he thought the lines in the earth could be the Peru uh, Nazca line. Who's involved in this cockeyed mess? Baron Peter Belasco. Stay as far away from him as possible. That'll be a little hard to do, since he's my husband. Indy then literally jumps mid-air from one plane onto Yuri's plane. Then we cut to Yuri, he's cutting himself down from a parachute, and he hears cocking of rifles. He turns around, and it's the Peruvian soldiers aiming at him. Now we're back with Indy and Marion. They hear a twig snap. They all look around. Then a German gentleman emerges from between the natives. It's Dr. Felix von Guran. He says to them, Guten Tag. Now let's get back into the film. Okay, Eden, here's something I want to point out to you is... I said last episode that this felt like a parallel universe where things were dipping in and out mm. of Crystal Skull. It feels now like the end of my favorite movie, Fast and Furious 7. <laughs> Vin Diesel and Paul Walker start <laughs> dividing up on the road and go their separate ways. Mm -hmm. This feels like it's now starting to go off in a separate direction from Crystal Skull. Look, I think there is a little bit of a divide. We've got mm -hmm. to that divide, but don't don't worry. We're oh, it's going to come we're, back. <laughs> we're coming back. We're coming back. We're coming back around. When you say we're, we're going to go so far that we're just not going to come back to aliens, it's like, oh, it comes back to we're aliens. We're coming in a straight back way. to aliens. <laughs> but uh, there's, there's a few more twists and turns along the way. Okay. So let's get back to it. Indian Marion are uh, now in two dugout canoes being led by Von Guran, the, this German. Uh, Von Guran. Yes. Yeah. This, uh, this German guy that we don't really know much about. So they're going through the water and they reach the shore. Marion is helped off. Uh, onto the shore, and then we see in the distance through a clearing, we see Baron Peter Belosco. That is uh, Marion's husband, the okay. uh, the other archaeologist. Yep. Yep. Um, so now we sort of uh, go through and we meet all the, uh, the everyone sort of sitting around, and he goes around and meets uh, all the members of this expedition. So we've got Russian spies, we've got this expedition, we've got communist rebels, and we've got uh, the El Presidente. Everyone's sort yeah. of in the picture, and they're all yeah. sort of uh, things are going to sort of kick off very okay. soon. We've guys. got quite a lot of names coming at us. Let's do a quick inventory and see if I've got this straight. Okay. Our Presidente is Escalante, the Presidente. Correct. Yeah. Okay, got that. We've got um, Von Gruen, who is the big German fella that yes. they found at the end of the last episode. Yes. And we've got uh, Belasco, who is the husband of Marion. Yes, that right? that's correct. Gotcha. Yes. Okay. Mate, you're on top of this. Okay. Do we, we forget, hang on, who fell out of the parachute? Or am uh, I... Yes, oh. that was Yuri. Very <laughs> okay. good. Yuri. What happened to Yuri, guys? Wow. Well, we're, we're going to find out right that Look, that is such a great segue, Gus, because we're going to find <laughs> that out right now. Because we are cutting to our El Presidente <laughs> interrogating Yuri. Yes, so he he got kidnapped when he uh, came out of his um, his uh, parachute. So they put and straight away we know how much El Presidente he loves ropes. Yeah. So he, inst <laughs> he instantly puts a rope around Yuri's neck. So he's just about to be hung, but he promises. He says, "Look, I will show you. Or I will tell you everything about the Crystal Skull. I'll tell you where to find the city. Just don't do anything stupid. I can help you guys." And the El Presidente nods and goes, "Let's see what you're worth." 
Now we go back to the encampment and Peter pulls out the crystal skull and everyone sort of gathers around to view it. So we're introduced to the team now. So we've got um, so we've got the German, Von Guren. He's this German who got along with the natives. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's befriended He's befriended them. He's befriended them. Yeah, yeah befriended exactly. Them, yeah. yeah, thank you guys. Thank you. Um, and then we've got um, Hama, who is a Japanese map expert. Great. We've got Lars, a Swedish psychic. And we've got um, Himelium, a Swedish anthropologist. Uh, Victor, a Hungarian uh, sort of muscle guy. Mm-hmm. And we've got uh, Poffy, a uh, Peruvian labor pool boss. So we've got all these sort of characters that are all coming in. You don't really need to worry about too many of them. I fear that not all of them are going to make it to the end. Yeah. If I'm I was going to say, this is, a, this is a rogues gallery of like people who are going to fall in traps yep. later 100%. on. A hundred percent. They're yeah. all going to have their skills, but when it comes to the skill of just dodging a blow dart <laughs> out of a wall, <laughs> none of them are going to survive. That's indie's. I, I will say, Hama, he, he was the map guy, right? Yes, map he, expert. He'll make it in to at least towards the end because he needs to help them mm-hmm. find the city because he's the map expert yeah, he's the exactly. only one I'm, I'm putting my chips on Hummer and I'm uh, I don't think the Swedish psychic is going to be around for no. long I just uh, <laughs> anybody needs their mind read come on guys that's why you brought me <laughs> I am how you say uh, expendable <laughs> hey <laughs> So they've um so they've got out the crystal skull and everyone's sort of looking at it, right? Um, and so I just want to say now that we mentioned it before, but yes, of course, we can't go any further without talking about Dan Aykroyd and his uh, <laughs> vodka, right? So um, it is. I'm not sure if you know about it, but it is filtered through diamond crystals. So he filters Ooh. the vodka through that, um, mm-hmm. and it's uh, basically this is this is. This is quite funny because Dan Aykroyd was creating his Crystal Head vodka at the same time that this film was being put together, right? Really? really? So sensing a little bit of a conflict, Aykroyd actually arranged to meet with director Steven Spielberg to discuss about resolving this issue. <laughs> Because he's like, I've got this product. It's called Crystal Skull Vodka. You're making a film called Crystal Skull. Like, and he I, loves his aliens, Dan Aykroyd. That's the whole point behind all this. Absolutely loves it. He's just bonkers for aliens and all the occult stuff. So he would have been like, let me be your reference on this film or something. Well, it, exactly right. Because the Crystal Skull Vodka is in reference to the 13 Crystal Skulls that are actually a real thing. So this mm. is where it's sort of come from. Real. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, to Aykroyd's surprise, Spielberg actually suggested that... Crystal Skull Vodka becomes the official yeah. vodka of the Crystal Skull and it's to be served to everyone at the premiere. Well, this is my point. It <laughs> seems weird that Dan Aykroyd, like, I'm launching a product. Now they're making a huge blockbuster movie about the similar thing. This is going to be terrible for my brand. <laughs> yeah, no. I, I wonder if that that totally sounds like Spielberg just giving him something to shut him up. Being like, hey, what if we all ha- we yep. serve it at the premiere? And I'm like, that's enough for Dan Aykroyd to think, like, yes, I got him where I want him. And it's like, <laughs> uh, Ridiculous. So they're all gathered around. They've got the crystal skull. Um, it's actually cut out of one singular piece of quartz. Cork in the top? Uh, yes. <laughs> no, chug, chug, chug. Everyone's chugging. I um, like the elder, elderflower version of it with a little bit of a tang. Like that. <laughs> that's, my, that's the one I go for. You're a classy guy, Gus. You're a classy guy. Thank you. Um, now, Peter thinks that it holds an ancient secret of the gods. But uh, Indy says, look, it's just it's just a skull. It's just an everyday normal crystal skull crystal that you see skull. everywhere. Yeah. Um, but you, leg- you, you throw a stone and you hit a crystal skull. Mate, yeah. There, yeah. there are a dime a dozen out here in Peru. Um, legends say that the lost city is also a place where wishes are made real. So they make that they make a point of that. Okay. Right? okay. Um, so now we're back at the camp. Everyone's sort of gathered around. Indy and Hama, the map expert, they're sort of trying to figure out how Oxley's theory about the uh, the Nazca lines and symbols would work. So they start looking at the maps and they go through a, a, a lot of things to try and find where about the lost city is located. Oxley, he knew that they needed to figure out the order of the pieces, right? So Lars, the psychic, says he'll sleep with the photos under his pillow and he'll have an answer tomorrow. Kill him now. Oh, my God. Kill him now. He's got no idea what he's doing. (laughs) Well, interestingly enough, that during the night, uh, our Von Guran, our big German guy, he sneaks into Lars's tent and he drops a small, tiny black frog with a red stripe on its back into his mouth. He then takes the map and photos with him. You never trust a German, mate. If Indiana Jones has taught me anything, it's never trust a German. <laughs> and you, you live that to this day. Yeah, very much so, yeah. very much so. <laughs> now, the next morning, they find Lars dead. His face is all molted. He, he, they sort of open his mouth and all dozens of these small frogs sort of jump out of his mouth. 
Oh, good reveal, though. Like, good death. Um, Indy says that this is the poisoned arrow frog, and it has the most deadly poison on Earth. So everyone starts running off because all these frogs are sort of yeah. jumping everywhere now. In the commotion, they realise that Von Guren is gone, and so is the maps and the photos. But luckily, Indy still has the negatives. They strike camp, and they start moving out. And as they're moving out, Indy hears a strange noise coming from a tarp-covered truck just off to the side. He asks Peter about it, but he sort of brushes him off and says, oh, it's nothing, don't worry about it. Yeah. So the El Presidente, his expedition's moving out. They've got trucks, soldiers, they've even got an APC. Um, and the, uh, the Presidente is talking to Yuri, so Yuri's sort of saying, yep, I'm going to lead you um, into the jungle. Then the US agent from earlier that sort of called up on, uh, on Indy, yep. he's sort of there and he says, look, we need to secure the US Russian spy, Indiana Jones, and I'm coming with you. So they pull him on board. And inside the, piece, the APC, we also see Von Guren leaving. He's got all these maps in there. So that whole side, that's the baddie side. We've, okay, we've so got them all there together are, now. To be clear, there are two expeditions going at the same time. There's the Indiana yep. Jones one, and then there's the Escalante one with Yuri. Yes, Yuri leading gotcha. them. Which yes. it's, yep. it's kind of like it's it's mirroring what we then got in Crystal Skull, which was that you had um, uh, the the Ray Winston character who was like, it, that's yeah, kind Mac. of Yuri. That was yes, correct. Mac. Yeah, yep. that, and he was leading the Russians. So they had the sort of the dueling expeditions, which you get in... I guess Raiders, and you also got in uh, Last Crusade, where everyone's racing to the thing together, uh, and it sort of becomes Correct. like, can, oh. should they work together or kill each other kind of thing? So we're now heading out, yeah? Um, so the APC with the El Presidente, so they've got, it, they've got theirs, um, and then we go back to a Peter's expedition, yep. yeah? And they're trying to figure out what to do. Peter is with, Belasco, right? Yeah, Belasco, yeah. Peter. Yeah. Peter, Peter Belasco. Yeah, yep. Peter Belasco. Um, they sort of interchange. Peter to those that know him. Yeah, he's yeah. to his mates. They sort of interchange <laughs> his names. They call him Baron at some times and stuff like that. This is confusing. So, yeah, there's, there's a lot going on. Um, but we're going to try and figure out how to get there and how to read this map. Mr. Hammer. Yes, Indiana, sir. We rented that area you had circled on a map. I have been trying to calculate the next leg of the journey based on your Nezka photos. I believe I have the scale correct, but I am certain of the rest. Observe. They lay the map on the ground. Indy hunkers down with Marion joining him. Havat has a star pictograph carefully drawn on a clear plastic sheet which he lays over the map. It's a five-pointed star with one point longer than the other. The star comes first, then the hummingbird. If I could determine the direction, the star points us. It would indicate our path. Star first, then hummingbird? What do you base that order on? Berasco-san told me. He specified the sequence and said he would provide further information as we drew closer. Star? I don't see how that applies to where we are, I... Indy notices something. He stands back up and gazes at the landscape, increasingly amazed as the puzzle becomes clear to him. There are five mountain peaks spread widely across the landscape. Five peaks? Five peaks of a star? He crouches back down and he puts his finger on the plastic revolving it into place. On the map, we see the five points of the star aligned perfectly with the mountain peaks. But which of the peaks are the direction we must go? One point of the star is longer than the others, like an arrow. That's our direction. That'll lead us to the hummingbird, whatever that is. Ah, a brilliant solution. Belasco-san is a genius. Indy sees Peter passing by on horseback. Hey, Belasco-san. How do you know the star came first? You don't expect me to give away all my secrets, do you? Trust me. Peter rides on. You might as well. He's never wrong. Right, I forgot. You're an excellent judge of character. You're perfect. Yeah, and handsome. Did you go for that type? Where'd you two meet, anyway? There was a conference in Budapest. It was spring. The trees were blooming. The Danube was sparkling. Spare me the details. What's the matter, Jones? Jealous? No. Marcus. Oh, yeah. What about that glamour gal you spent time with? Miss Pissy Face. What's her name? That, that singer. Willie Scott. Yeah, her. Still in touch? On and off. She moved out to Hollywood to be a star. Last I heard, she fell in love and married some big shop director. Oh, mistake. Pulling your claws. She's a terrific person when you get to know her. No, snake. Indy glances back. A large jungle snake is slithering up behind him. Rising calmly, 
He scoops the snake up and grabs it by the head. It twists furiously in his grasp. I, I can't believe you did that. I got over my fear a long time ago. People change, you know. Relax. It's just a snake. He tosses the snake off into the jungle. Character development. Yeah, oh my God. God. he's no longer scared of snakes. <laughs> no, over it. It. This is great. Now, did you did you like um did you like the little reference to Willie? There we go. The actress who played uh, Willie, um, I think it was uh, uh, Kate Capshaw. Matt was married. To Steven Spielberg. Yeah, exactly Correct, right. My so friend, exactly there you go. Right. He a, a little was that another little like uh, pandering line to the to director. This is what I wonder. <laughs> this is what <laughs> married a handsome doing. director. <laughs> yeah, we heard it last episode. Obviously, we heard it with uh, Darabont uh, pleading to his master, Mr. Spielberg, to please do a cool action sequence. <laughs> and now he seems to be stroking the ego of Mr. Spielberg yet again by saying, oh, "Wow, she married some handsome, a, handsome, a big very shot. handsome, <laughs> big shot director. Only the biggest films he does." Can I just say though? <laughs> At the moment, Indiana Jones is such a sulky little little boy, yeah. isn't he? Like, there's a point where he says, where did you guys meet? And she starts explaining the story. He's like, oh, spare me the details. You <laughs> asked her where you met. <laughs> no, but you're not wrong. He's definitely, like we said this in the last episode, he's not carrying himself with the urgency of why he needs to be at the forefront of this expedition. And I think that's something that feels slightly, again, there's, there's a lot of stuff we gloss over, but things we're missing in this is the sense that, like, why does he have to beat them to it? What is this? I mean, having the the reveal of the fact that it, this skull can maybe grant wishes is a big uh, motivator that we didn't really have, like, right at the start dangled mm. in front of us like as to what this skull means. I mean, because if you go back to the other films, you've got the radio to God, you've got the, the like, the Kale Ma heart immortality. Like, there was a thing they were all pining after, and you knew that. Whereas yeah. this one, it's like, he didn't know what he was doing up until the point that he literally turns up into into Peru. Yeah, the MacGuffin is, it's slightly, it doesn't have that really clear sense yeah. of this. But at the same time, it also doesn't start off with, you know the other one starts off with them trying to get the alien from, like, yeah. Area 51 that, sort yeah. of thing? So it's, it's mm. not being so heavy-handed with the alien stuff so early on. It's sort of trying to lead you to something That's else. That's true, though. I do get a sense in this because Indy's meant to be a bit older is he meant to be like a little bit senile in this because <laughs> it seems like he doesn't completely know what's going on and is just wandering aimlessly through everything mm -hmm. to the point where last episode when he met Marion and she's like they did mention the expedition to you and he's like uh yeah I, I think yeah I think they mentioned something about that no one said anything to him he no. doesn't know what he's doing he, well, he's going, he, he goes from playing dumb when he was young and sharp to now he just can play the old man card and be like oh where literally. am I if, if he gets caught by any Russians, he can be like, where's my, I'm meant to be in my hotel room. And they're like, oh, come on, we'll take you home. So now we cut between um, the El Presidente expedition. Um, he, they're following in the tracks of the uh, Belesco expedition. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so they're literally following where they've gone. Indy starts linking all the Nezca images with landmarks that they go. So they go from there and they find an area with hundreds of giant hummingbird nests, which looks really cool. Ah. Um, then they see a, a lake in the distance that looks like the killer whale. Okay. Um, and then they do a series of dissolves through that are sort of matching up because these these um, Nazca lines are, are legitimate things you yeah. can see mm. them yeah. so they sort of match them up and they sort of fade in and out so we're sort of following Indy and that's the sort of stuff like I love that in terms of Indiana Jones like yeah. that fig figuring out things and yeah, yeah there wasn't enough of that him using his uh, his archaeological skills those are the moments where he's like yeah actually being the professor and working things out yeah. and you know just f sort of fobbing off any of the danger around him because he's got the goal in sight like that's where we see pure Indy and I yeah, love it I love that Th there's love two that. things I love when Indiana Jones does one is solve a part puzzle and two is slightly miscalculate something he's trying to do <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah so the series of dissolves they take place and in these dissolves um gus you'll be uh, happy to know that the red line is back oh, they use the good. red line still as going Excellent. the way through there um now peter says that they're close and that indy is he's a little bit suspicious of where he's getting intel from he's like how do you know we're so close and he goes oh, i just know don't worry about it i know um, so now we're back at El Presidente's expedition and they've caught up to the Indy camp and they plan to attack at dawn so they can sort of see them. So Yuri sneaks away into the APC and he sends a message via Morse code to a plane high above them with coordinates and it's full of Russian commandos. Ooh. Yes, they take the coordinates and they parachute out of the plane. Indy wakes up in the middle of the night to some more strange noises. He creeps out of his tent and he makes his way towards the sound. It's coming from the covered truck. Indy slowly peels away the covers to see a disheveled Professor 
Oxley looking as crazed and wild as ever. He's almost like an animal in the back there. Oh, my God. Belasco must not have known because he said there was nothing. Yeah, he said there was nothing. Yeah. Oh. Surprise to him. That's that's going to be tragic when Belasco finds out that he's made such a terrible mistake. Well, he's going to find out right <laughs> now because in the morning, uh, Peter's there and he's looking at the, the final uh, Nazca photo and then Indy confronts him. Mr. Homer, I present the final piece of the puzzle. The final piece. Are you sure? Peter nods. The moment is electric, and everyone is breathless in awe, except for Indy. Ask him how he knows. Go on, ask him. Does it matter? It does to me, you son of a... Indy! Indy, understand? This is intolerable. You go mad. Yeah, and that's a word, all right. What did you do, Belasco? Read the skull's mind? Huh? Ask it 20 questions, or did you have help? Victor darts in to protect his boss, but Peter waves him off. No, no need for that. Just a misunderstanding. It's nothing to civilized men can't work out. Enough! Marion has a lever action Winchester. You both lost your minds? What is going on here? That's the guy in the cage. Marion, tell me you didn't know. Look me in the eye and tell me. Know what? That psychic you hired, the Swede. You shouldn't have bothered. Your husband had one stashed all along. Indy hauls a canvas tarp up off a cage. We see a wild man cringing within, blinded by the daylight, terrified. Professor Vernon Oxley, the sole survivor of that expedition three years ago. Isn't that right? Peter? Would you have gone along with me if I told you the truth? No. Of course not. I know how sentimental you Americans are. He's better off than I found him. Better than the asylum? There was no asylum. Are you so naive? This country is hardly progressive with the mentally ill. I found him in a traveling circus. The wild men of Los Dioses. Peasants would pay their pesos to jeer at him in a pit of squalor and filth. Should I have left him there? Would that please you more? He deserves the best care there is. And he shall get it, as soon as the task is complete. Know this. Whatever happened to him in the lost city has reconfigured his brain. He is a psychic miracle. He and the skull are the divining rod leading us to the greatest archaeological find of all time. Not if I can help it. That's not your decision to make. Escalade appears, just as three dozen soldiers emerge from the tree line. I am now in charge of this expedition. Siora Belasco is so good as to discard the rifle. That goes for everybody. What's the meaning of this? Must I remind you that all antiquities in Peru belong to me, and that the penalty for withholding is quite severe? It has come to my attention that you have a certain crystal skull. Bring it to me now! Marion looks at Indy and Peter. She turns and heads back to the tent. Just as Yuri and Van Guren also emerge from the jungle, trailed by the Habito natives. Von Groen, you traitorous pig! Making new friends, Yuri? You leave me little choice, Indy. It is the obnoxious habit you have of staying alive. Marion reappears, and Escalante motions her forward. She brings him the knapsack. He reaches inside and pulls out the crystal skull for all to see. The Habito natives drop to their knees. It is beautiful. It is mine. Not so fast. Suddenly, Yuri yanks a revolver out of Van Guren's holster. He faces Escalante with the gun leveled at his head. Never trust a communist. Well, I hit to ruin the moment, but... Uh... I am in control of this expedition. With what? Not be sure. A mere six bullets. It is enough. Yuri, no. I'm crazy. Nice bluff. Seven men. Up front. Seven soldiers rush forward and raise their rifles, creating an impromptu firing squad. I'll see you six and raise you. No bluff. Ready. And. Suddenly, the tree line on Yuri's side of the clearing erupts with machine gun fire. The seven men of Escalade's firing squad collapse dead. Eight Soviet commandos, summoned by Yuri, rush from the trees, machine guns leveled. 
It will see your seven. You know, I will raise you. Eight Zukov commandos. Yuri turns to a commando. He tosses him a machine gun. Now I really must insist. Hand the skull to the lady and she will bring it to me. No! Il Presidente. Do not wish to create an international incident, but uh, I will kill you. I have two dozen rifles aimed at you and your men. I'm not afraid to die, aren't you? Marion, want to step to one side? Take aim. Prepare to fire on my order. Commandos, pick your targets. Prepare to kill them all. The men are all amped up, fingers twitching on triggers ready to fire. But they pause. A strange sound. A weird buzzing. Indy glances towards the tree line. Some unseized things start to emerge. Something pokes out from the grass. A red army ant. A big one. Nine inches long. A big ant. Dozens of them start to cut through the grass. The trees begin to shake. A lot of big ants. Okay, let's break this down because there was a lot going on in that scene. Yeah. Okay. I, so thought I, I thought I knew who was betraying who, but then <laughs> some extra people were betraying some extra people. Yeah. And they're all in the fo- jungle at the same time, just turning up at once. Like, <laughs> this, is, this is crazy. Yeah, exactly right. So, okay, so first of all, so Indy reveals that, uh, that Peter yeah. um, had uh, found Oxley, and yeah. then Oxley had said, Oh, no, I actually rescued him from um, a travelling circus sort of yep. thing. I'll pop that down yep. as betrayal one. Yes, okay. that's betrayal one. Good. Okay, because he didn't we, we need some we need some red marks against Peter here because we don't really want him to wind up with Marion. Correct. Um, so, okay, good, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's actually, and he didn't tell her about it, so he was lying to her, and he was pretending that he knew which way to go, but it was actually Oxley telling them which way. Yep. Right. Cool. So then, but then the El Presidente mm-hmm. turns up with Yuri, being yep. led by Yuri, so they pull out all their guns. Yep. But then they sort of double cross okay. each other. Betrayal, betrayal too. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yep, yep. So then, so then El Presidente then draws his guns on Yuri, and he says, "You're actually a communist. I hate the communist scum. Yep. Thanks for getting us here." So then, then, what happens next? Yep. Is he thinks he doesn't have any support, but then the commandos that parachuted yep. in, the Russian commandos, are then in the jungle and they kill yep. half of the Peruvian soldiers. So now we've got El Presidente and his soldiers, we've got Yuri mm-hmm. and his soldiers, yep. and then we've got Peter in there as yep. well with his expedition people. Yep. And then we've got Oxley, Indy, and Marion yep. as well. So now we've got four groups and yes. three betrayals. It's a yep. classic Peruvian standoff, if I've ever heard of one. <laughs> Yeah, they shouldn't have gone to the famous uh, Peruvian jungle of uh, Betrayal Point, <laughs> which, is, which is where they've wound up here. Exactly, exactly. exactly. So that's everything. And now, what, 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 what more could they want? A giant thing of ants, which in a way is the jungle betraying them. <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> betrayal number four. Betrayal number four. So we've got the, and this you'll be very familiar with. It's the, it's the ant scene. Yeah. So they all sort of come out and start attacking everyone. Um, in the chaos, Indy grabs the skull. Stuffs it into a bag, and Indy, Marion, and uh, Hama, the Japanese map guy, they all jump into Oxley's truck, and they sort of they punch it, and they start leaving. Um, then uh, two other cars, so Russian commandos and Yuri, all start chasing them as well. So they, they do, and in in the other one, they do have that big sort of chase scene through the jungle. He turns the truck towards the river, and they sort of jump off into the river and land in the river and start floating down you the said river. Y- Yuri was there as well. Yuri was there in another truck as oh, well. Oh, chasing them, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Can, can I say uh, what I fear here? If you you got a river in a jungle. I fear they're heading towards a waterfall. If I'm being honest with well, you. Well, you're skipping ahead, Cambo. Okay. You're skipping ahead because first we okay. see we see some vines. Oh, of course. Ah, yes. Okay. So, He's going to go for a run, a horse run up, a swing into river, land on car. Oh right. my god! Okay. You. I mean, uh, hang I, on. Take I, your I, mask off, Frank <laughs> Darabont. <laughs> I mean, I can see it happening because, like, seven-year-old me is doing that with action figures, yeah. and I shouldn't. That shouldn't be a good draft for like an action scene. So now we're um, everyone's in the water and they're flowing, and then of course, yes, you nailed it before. They're heading towards yes. not one waterfall, not two waterfalls, <laughs> not three waterfalls, <laughs> but four waterfalls. I can oh imagine gosh. the pitch meeting. Okay, D- George, Stephen, what's scarier than one waterfall? Or two waterfalls? <laughs> now, what's going. scarier than that? Three waterfalls. <laughs> and again, what's scarier than that? Four waterfalls. <laughs> and they uh, five waterfalls? No, that'd be stupid. Yeah. Oh, no, that's crazy. No one's so, ever done that. That, that, four- that goes into comedy when you get to five waterfalls. Yeah. <laughs> it's no longer scary. Four waterfalls, how many characters in the car? Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah so four. they've got a waterfall each. Yeah, per person. Okay. 
So now they fall off, they go down the waterfalls, they manage to survive, and now they're on the bottom, um, sort of, everyone is is out of the car now at this point. Well, almost everyone, because Oxley's still in the cage. So he's starting to drown, and Indy has to dive back in, holds his breath, undoes the cage, gets Oxley out, gets him to shore, they all land on shore, breathing heavily, going, okay, we've got through this, let's, let's just take a moment to breathe. But then Oxley jumps off and runs off into the forest, yeah? Now we start, and this is this is what I hate as well. <laughs> then Indy starts chasing Oxley via Vine. Uh, so they both start wait, the no, Vine thing. Really? Yes, they do. They do. So he, he got a taste for the Vine swinging on the river. And yep. He was like, I think I can do this now. Because I was going to say, up yep. to that point, yes, we've, se- we've seen a lot of this in the final film, yep. uh, but it does that classic thing, which is its escalation. It's like action scene to action scene to action scene. Yep. They're never quite out of it. Like a good Indiana Jones action portion of the film should be like a few things stitched together up until a point where you're like this is exhausting and unbelievable and I'm like as you said right now running off into the jungle and the I assume swinging on vines a la the monkey Shia LaBeouf yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. again something that David Cope the writer of Crystal Skull got a lot of flack for is the vine swinging scene, which is lays at Darabont's feet. Yeah, look, it's not as bad as the mo- one with the monkeys. It well, is. We literally- don't know that it had the potential to be just as bad. Thank it you could very have much. been, but there's no monkeys helping. Because you him. remember, John Hurt would have been swinging in these vines. Yeah, that's true, actually. <laughs> yes. old man John Hurt. <laughs> yeah. So um, basically, Indy then tries to use his whip to do one last swing yep. to follow Oxley, and it breaks, and he falls to the ground. And then he hears Marion's voice call out, "Indy, Marion." Thank God, I thought I'd last you. Indy freezes as he emerges into the clearing. Not 20 yards away, Yuri hears Marion by the wrist with a machine gun pressed into her side, while Hummer stands helplessly by. You have no idea how much trouble you caused me. Discard the gun. Let her go, Yuri. Of course. Just hand over the skull. Indy nods and pulls the knapsack from around his neck. Yuri prods Marion forward to retrieve it. She starts across the clearing, but then pauses halfway. Suddenly, Escalante's APC crashes through the trees into the clearing. The APC stops, and dozens of soldiers emerge, soaked to the bone. They've got a group of prisoners with them. Peter, Osgood, Proffy, two of Proffy's men. Peter! Marion, are you all right? The Presidente, the inconvenient. There's nowhere you can run that I cannot follow. And as you can see, you are quite outnumbered. Surrender your machine gun. Run out of guys, Yuri. Do as he says. Very well. Seora Velasco, bring me the weapon. No, please. I insist she move out of harm's way. I'll do it. Peter walks out bravely to take her place. Marion moves aside. Peter steps up to Yuri, the two men now standing face to face. Take it, Peter. Take the gun. Peter reaches up, takes the machine gun from Yuri. Both men glare into each other's eyes. But then Peter suddenly turns, the machine gun blazing in his hand, raking back and forth, mowing down all of Enscalate's men. Only Enscalate and Von Guren are left standing. I thought you'd never get here. No, it wasn't for lack of trying. Peter? He's a spy for the Russians. Should have known. You were in it with him all along. Yes. It was quite awkward when you showed up instead. A spy? For the Russians? Well, yes. Sorry, I didn't know how to tell you. Boy, you think you know a guy. She punches him in the nose. Sweetness. Aren't we overreacting? This isn't like leaving the cap off the toothpaste, Peter. You're a Russian spy! Indeed, but you're not going to let a little thing like that come between us. Marion, please don't ask me to make a choice. I'm an American, Peter. Through and through. You knew that when you married me. What do you expect me to do, convert? Uh, look. You guys have the guns, right? So you win. Why don't the rest of us just walk away? Peter spins to Indy, machine gun poised, and then pauses, gazing up in wonder as he realizes where they are. 
Are you stupid as well as blind? Indy follows his gaze, and we reveal an awesome sight above the trees. The canyons end at this spot. Clouds are just clearing the sun, splashing light across the cliffs on both sides of the river, into which are carved two giant stone faces, gazing out towards the valley. They're like sentinels, or gateposts. The visages are humanoid, though not really human. Behold, the great stone sentinels of Los Dioses, the twin gods that mark the entrance to the Valley of Dreams. We are here. Okay, so did we get that? Okay. So, who, so more wait, double wait, crossing. Wait, 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 wait. Come on. There was a one, two, three sucker punch earlier betrayals. Yeah. I didn't expect a fourth to come swinging like that. That's what yeah, they so think. Like get... a fourth waterfall, it just comes out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So Peter is actually a Russian spy. Yeah. So mm-hmm. so they're all they're all in on it. Can I say I I'm starting to understand now. George Lucas said I want a fun B movie sci fi adventure, and Darabont's like. What if we did a depressed old man and it's Russian spies <laughs> and you don't know whose side anyone's on and everyone's betraying everyone? He's like, that's not at all what I asked for. <laughs> <laughs> so we are. So now we're in a cave, right? So Peter and Yuri are tying up Marion, Indy, Turner, the US agent yep. that has done nothing, and El Presidente Escalante. So they've tied them all up. Um, mm-hmm. Peter says, Marion, do you want to join him? Mm-hmm. But Marion replies, You know what I want? A divorce. Oh, do you yeah. know what? Oh, I, I'm loving Marion in this. I think she's handled way better in oh, this way than she better. was in Definitely. Crystal Skull. The, the, I, it's such a Marion line. She finds out he's a spy. She punches him in the nose and she goes, you think you know a guy. guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really good. Um, and Indy, when she says wants a divorce, there's a sly smile on Indy's face. <laughs> you dirty of course, dog. Of course, like, there is. He's <laughs> playing the 12-year long game. Yeah. He's like, ah, oh, I knew this would all play out in my favour. He's being a dirty dog and we shouldn't be surprised because they named the dog Indiana. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Very, Very good. good. Um, they start laying TNT all around them and they're just about to leave. But uh, then a profi and Victor, who are these two unknown guys, yep. they were like the helpers. Yeah, they're my um, favourites. Yeah, they're, they're, they're big times. Suddenly they turn their guns on Yuri and Peter. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> you wanted more betrayals? Uh, you, you got it, you sir. Got I, I'll be Hang honest. On. I've had my fill of betrayals. <laughs> also, can we just we can we just circle back to the fact that were, these, were they about to execute the hostages by dynamite? Yes, by TNT dynamite. Yes. <laughs> okay. I don't know if I've seen that in an in action film. You've all got guns. You've all got rope. You yeah. could use the rope you were such yeah. a fan of earlier. But no, let's use TNT. Why does everyone keep shooting all of Escalante's men but never no, Escalante? Escalante himself? Oh, you never shoot hit you this. Save him to last. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So now, so Profi and Victor say they're not. They don't care about anyone. They're just capitalists. They believe in more money, and they think they can get a better deal and a higher bidder. So then they tie up Peter and Yuri. So now, literally, everyone is tied up. <laughs> from from the El Presidente to uh, yeah to Indy to, to Marion to Yuri to Peter, everyone's mm-hmm. tied up. Yeah. Right. So then these two guys take this crystal skull and they head off. And they, as they leave, they light the fuse. Right. So now the fuse is starting to starting to sort of tick down. A long fuse, I imagine. It's pretty long. It's pretty long. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They've got to get out of there. You yeah, know yeah, yeah. exactly. So Indy. So they're trying to blow out the fuse, but they they can't they can't blow it out. Then Indy turns to Marion and he wants to tell her something. He stumbles over his words for a bit, and Peter says, "Like, uh, come on, spit it out." I love her. Okay, I love her. <laughs> right. <laughs> so that's him confessing his love for Marion. Then they both lean forward, straining against their ropes, and they touch lips in a in their kiss. So then um, so we draw back from their kiss And who do we see standing at the entrance of the cave Oxley's back So he gets down on his knees And he chews through the cord To, uh, to help people escape So he, okay. he chews everyone out Everyone gets up They jump out um, Just in time Now they look They do turn around And they see that there's still Everyone else is in there <sighs> Indy sort of shakes his head And he goes back And he undoes everyone in there Because in the script it says He's, he's a hero after all yeah. So he's not going to leave everyone to die this is the thing, like, I appreciate at the same time, for as chaotic as this has gotten, for as many backstabs and betrayals as we've seen, there is still this classic trope in these films, which is everyone is at the mercy of the big bad near the end, and so they all have to kind of work together. Work together or they to all have there, to, yeah. yeah, which is a great moment in any of these films, where it's like, suddenly the bad guy's like, don't worry about me, there's ants here, or there's, you know, whatever we're going to run <laughs> yeah. into later on. Yeah, I love that line in Crystal Skull, don't worry about me, there's ants here. <laughs> there's ants here. <laughs> 
Um, and then the uh, just as they jump out, the cave explodes, and they use the uh, the word waboom. Waboom. In there. The, the, a big waboom. That's how you know it's a biggie because it's a waboom. Um, the group then uh, they start going into the lost city. Yeah, they pa- they pass ancient sort of archways and things like that. There's this huge Mayan uh, style pyramid in the middle. It's the Grand Plaza. They sort of work towards that. They make their way towards the temple only to see Profi sort of come out. His hair's gone all crazy. Um, he's holding the crystal skull and he's sort of muttering to himself. He's got burns all over his face. Indy asks him, where's Pablo? And he says he touched the gold and he was consumed by fire. We have to make a sacrifice. And he shows them a decapitated head. He starts running off screaming. Yeah. So it's, things are getting real. Things are getting mm. real. So they enter the temple to see two giant water wheels connected to solid gold conduits. Water heels. They're turbines. Impossible. Descending from arrays of connectors on each gantry are a series of solid gold conduits running across the floor in long weaving patterns. Indy follows the humming conduits and he finds a dead man on the floor, body still smoking the ashes of the hand gripping a conduit. Pablo. Office said he touched the gold and was consumed by the fire of the gods. Indy picks up a small pebble and tosses it into the conduit. The pebble explodes with a flash and a puff of smoke. Electrocuted. These gold rails are conductors. This whole place is like a massive power generating plant. That can't be. This city is at least 10,000 years old. They wouldn't have such technology. They couldn't. Don't step on the rails. They proceed down the huge corridor of wheels, encountering more and more bodies along the way. They turn the corner into a long, dark corridor. We're going to need a torch. An overhead fixture starts to glow. The walls are lined with hieroglyphs on both sides. Images depicting human slaves constructing the city. Flaming fireballs in the sky. Tall, inhuman forms. The group emerges into a huge antechamber. It's like a huge warehouse crammed with stuff. If you took the contents of the dozen best museums of antiquity in the world, well, it'd just be a drop in a bucket. There are artifacts from every ancient era from all over the world, heaped helter-skelter. Madre de Dios, I am the wealthiest man in the world. The others look around, trying to absorb it all. Macedonian, Egyptian, Celtic, Sumerian, Etruscan, Greek, Roman, Babylonian. Indy stops, seeing a primitive stone tool. He picks it up. Prehistoric? Stone Age? His eyes go to an ancient Egyptian skiff leafed with gold and hung with cobwebs, oars still in place. Nearby, beautifully painted Egyptian sarcophaguses. I must be dreaming. It's no dream. It's a mother lot. Artifacts from every ancient era of mankind. There's not a museum in the world that wouldn't sell its soul. Try a dozen museums. A hundred. How can this be? How could they gather this from all over the world? From so many different ages? One thing's for sure, they were collectors. Like us. And you know what's interesting, and I always love this when Indiana Jones does it. So, so they think that when you touch the gold, you burst into flames because yeah. gods are angry at you. But it's actually, there's a scientific reason behind it. It's mm-hmm. because it's actually mm-hmm. a big conduit thing yeah. and it's like all connected. They're actually getting electrocuted. I like that sort of line between science it, it, and mystery. Indiana yeah. Jones loves to explain magic as science until sometimes it is just magic. magic. Yeah, 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 <laughs> like, yeah. like Pandora's right up until box the end, and then it's and... that last thing he can't explain. And I get, <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's a formula, it's but cool. it is so perfect. And I feel like, yeah, it's something that is, this feels like a far more accurate version of that. It's giving us those moments that we really like near the end of the films. I, okay, so... I, I, well, I do wonder though, you know, they've found this wonderful chamber full of old artifacts from all throughout history, but it's a what if, but what would Mutt think of all of this is, is what I need to ponder, you know? <laughs> what would Mutt think? Say, what would Mutt do? <laughs> he'd be like, darn, look at all this. And they'd be like, what's your language, son? Yeah. yeah he'd be like, what? A bunch of old crap. And they'd be like, you, know, you don't respect <laughs> it. <laughs> and, then, and then Henry Senior comes out, slaps them both. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, we're in the we're in the final. This is the final chamber now. This is uh, it's all coming to a head. So they enter the final chamber. It's the chamber of the gods. Thirteen thrones are spaced in a wide circle around thirteen crystal skeletons, all missing their heads. Indy then places the crystal skull on top of one of the skeletons. It clicks in place. It's like fitting a key into a lock because a deep rumbling begins. The floor then opens up and 13 mummified human-like aliens raise out next to the skeletons. They are 10 feet in height and have sort of transparent tubes plugged into them all. Indy notices that the skull generates heat and that the heat is pumping a fluid into the mummies. Yeah? Okay. Um, Oxley rises up and he sort of starts glowing and his voice is booming. With no pupils, he's now a conduit for the unearthly power. So they're speaking, starting to speak through Oxley. Explain he, this one with science, Cambo. Come yeah, on. Yeah. <laughs> we don't know. Just as Indiana Jones does, sometimes they're like, oh, but this one's magic. Oh, this is probably, <laughs> yeah. this is probably magnets or something. <laughs> probably magnets. <laughs> uh, he welcomes everyone and explains that they fell from the stars. Vapor then comes out of the ground and swirls around them. The, uh, the mummified alien voice, he says that there are four among you, four with great thirst. Peter, Van Guren, uh, El Presidente Escalante, and Indiana Jones. And they are chosen. So then they start sort of like smoke starts going around each of them, right? Each person sees different things. Van Guren, he wants to see Germany rise up from the ashes. Escalante, he wants to be feared. Peter wants all the knowledge in the world. And Indy, well, he, he's still trying to reach out to Marion to like get out. He could have all the knowledge or power in the world, but all he does is sort of stare back at Marion and he realizes all he really wants in everything, it's not adventure, it's not glory, he just wants her. Indy is released from the dream cloud and falls to the ground. Marion sort of runs over to him and they sort of embrace. And then we see slowly each person getting their wish. Van Guren, he shall have glory, says the voice. A visage of Hitler, like this sort of undying Hitler, sort of appears and pulls out Van Guren's heart. So he puts his hand in Van Guren, pulls out his heart. Now, Peter, he's asked for more knowledge than any man can have. And his head begins to swell sort of larger and larger until the top of his head erupts. Um, Now, Escalante, he wanted to be feared. And he starts shrinking down smaller and smaller. He screams and screams until all that is left is a tiny black and red poison arrow frog. So he's been turned into a frog because everyone fears good. everyone fears the frog. Indy grabs the rifle from Marion and he shoots the crystal skull above. It explodes into millions of pieces. The whole place starts to shake. Indy starts shoving everyone out. Indy runs up with his pistol in hand. And this is, again, written in the script. He holds it up to the mummified alien's head and he says, Welcome to Earth. And he shoots oh, him in no. the head. Yeah, he, this is in the script. That's in the script. Hang on, hang on, hang on. This is this is after Independence Day. Post Independence Day, yes. we're just drawing a line directly from that. It's weird, isn't it? Guys, That's... guys, 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 guys. Indiana Independence Day. <laughs> Ooh, I've done well it. Done, sir. This is good. This is very good. Um, a strange line to put in there. It's very famously from Independence Place hold Day. Placeholder line. Placeholder line. Must yeah, have been. surely. Has to have been. Yeah, surely. Surely. Yeah. This huge earthquake starts happening, and they're running back through the chamber of ancient artifacts, which are all falling around them and, and cluttering to the ground. Um, but then something starts to happen. The whole floor begins to rise, and we realise that it's actually an enormous the disc U- shape. UFO, it's right. the UFO yeah. that starts coming out from the ground. The saucer then suddenly drops back to Earth. The gods themselves are falling from the heavens, and as it hits the ground, a nuclear flash lights up the sky, followed by a mushroom cloud. So he survived two nuclear, nuclear explosions in the one movie. The second one goes off, and he's like, "I've seen this before." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he just turns his back to it. <laughs> really? That would just go for another a bomb explosion. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. Interesting. Well, they, it, it, the other title could have been Indiana Jones and, and the Mushroom it's Cloud. The mushroom yeah. Cloud. Yeah. Um, so then we wipe, we, we do a wipe to the top of a cliff. All members of the party are soaked to the core. Yuri, Turner, Indy, uh, Hama, the Japanese um, map guy, he survived. Oh, boy. Good on him. He made it. And Marion's still there. Yuri next to Indy starts laughing that after all this, they're leaving empty-handed. He goes to shake Indy's hand. Indy steps forward, smiles, and nails Yuri with one of the all-time greatest haymakers you've ever seen on film. <laughs> Mr. Spielberg. <laughs> Thwack, he winds it yeah. up. He 
Exactly. It's the things that it says in the script sometimes just tick, <laughs> tickles my fancy. Um, and then Indy has a line. Indy's got all the lines this time, so he's just punched him in the face, mm-hmm. and he says to him, "Stay out of my country." Yeah. Okay. He's very patriotic. Okay. Very uh, patriotic. Get off my plane. Yeah, exactly. So also, now- you're not in your country right now, so it's a weird time to yell that. <laughs> like, Actually, it doesn't I really did- carry the same weight. I did not even think of that. That makes no sense at all. <laughs> that is 100% right. Oh my God, that is very weird. So now we cut to an auditorium where Indy is being presented the Congressional Gold Medal from President Eisenhower. He's been fully pardoned, and the President asks Indy if there's anything he wants to say. He says, there are only two words, I do. And it cuts, like hard cuts to a church with Indy and Marion getting married. They kiss and we, f- we sort of finish on their reception, everyone's sort of dancing and every old character from every indie film's there. Mm-hmm. We've got uh, Salah who's dancing in the yep. corner. Mm-hmm. We've got Oxley over there, Henry Senior. Short round? Well, it doesn't say short round, uh, but you should definitely have short round. Yeah, you should have short round. Like, definitely. And he'd, he's, he'd be like 30 or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Still with that Willie and her handsome yeah. director husband's there. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. And they're like, what a director. Um, so in the corner of the room, um, Henry Senior tells Indy that he's so proud of him. And he decides to celebrate by singing Fly Me to the Moon. So uh, Sean Connery singing Fly, Fly Me, to, me the moon. to the Moon. Yeah. Fly Ooh, me I would to love to see that. <laughs> yeah. That's shot. not how he would have said it. Uh, <laughs> a famously Sean like Connery. smooth American like Frank Sinatra. voice song yeah. done by like a Scottish senile old man. Yeah, let's go with it. Indian Marion dance and she asked him what he saw in the dream cloud. And we're very tight on the couple. He replies, I saw you. You're my fortune. You're my glory, kid. And they kiss. The end. Wow. Okay. okay. I've got a few. No- I've got a few notes of that final. Those final few chapters. Okay, yeah. George Lucas over here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, no, I just like just even at the wedding part of it, having him say that the realization that I was wishing for, dreaming of, yearning for you. It's like we know that's what yeah. was happening back in the uh, back in the temple itself. There wasn't like a a clever reveal to you us did, that the yeah. thing he was caring for the whole time. You don't which, need to do. You don't need to have that in there because they already know she knows he exactly she, he chose yeah. her also my other gripe is i don't think indy knows how to propose to someone because when he just says <laughs> any last words i do i'm like that's not no you need to ask her first I don't, <laughs> yeah. again yeah a bit a bit muddled maybe we are in senile indie territory there but that's just my final that's what that, i'm saying he sequence. doesn't know where he is or what's happening at any time <laughs> yeah clearly but let, let, let's just talk for a moment what actually happened to the film and why it didn't get made oh, in this in this section um Definitely. and i've actually got a little bit uh, of an interview from frank uh Darabont here. We'll, we'll hear from the man himself. Can I ask you about Indy 4 really quick before we... Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, what happened? Because when I heard you were writing the script, I was really excited. Like, wow, this is going to be really different. It might be pretty cool. And then all of a sudden I read that maybe George Lucas didn't like what you wrote, so they yeah. y- yanked you out of the project? Well, it's, it, you know, it's a, it, it, it's, it's a very simple story. There's not really any, like, great controversy or, you know, any, any, anything to, to, you know, to talk about. Um... It's like when you're a screenwriter, there are times when things go well and other times when things don't. We've all heard the stories and, you know, all of us have have had professional disappointments along these lines. But uh, basically what it really boils down to is I I worked with uh, Steven Spielberg, Mm -hmm. who is, I revere, what a gentleman, what a great man he is. Uh, Worked with him uh, to provide uh, some material on Indiana Jones. I wrote Mm -hmm. a couple of drafts for him. He really dug it. George didn't. And they're, you know, they're, right. they're really partners in this, you know, in, in this effort, in the Indiana Jones effort. So but both of them have to be on board. So that kind of reset the project back to more like square one. Okay, so will the, the one I see in theaters be anything like the version you wrote or will it be completely different? Not ducking the question. I honestly don't know. You don't know. Because I haven't read. Okay. I will. But the, the, crystal, the, the title of The Crystal Skull, was that something you were kind of... I had crystal skulls in mind, yeah, absolutely. Okay, I'm, so it's... I'm, I'm hearing there are elements in, in, in what they've just made that, I, that actually do draw uh, from, uh, from the story. Yeah, so basically what we're looking at now, Frank is basically saying, I wrote a fantastic script. Mm. I, I, well, yeah. <laughs> and he said, I think you're insane, George. Um, you can say things like that to George, he says. He doesn't even blink. He says he's very stubborn. Once he's made up his mind, he said, no, nah, we're not doing this. Yep. Uh, the script was dead, and this this version of it was dead. Here's, what, here's what's crazy to me is Frank Darabont doesn't have a screenwriting credit. That's insane. On 
That Green, is King insane. King Crimson, Skull. No, he doesn't, doesn't at all. It's it's solely credited to David Cope. And wow. I, I know that because obviously it's a union, the, the Writers Guild. Yeah. Uh, mm. You have to have a certain percentage of material that's made it into the other film. Surely, surely, surely he's got enough. Agreed. Agreed. There's enough that went across from there because, from from my understanding, in the limited research, was that when when Lucas and we touched on this in the last episode, when Lucas came to Spielberg and said, "I want to make the next one. It's gonna be Aliens." Spielberg had him at arm's length because Lucas was like, "It's gonna be like Aliens, space, uh, you know, uh, sources, and all this yeah. kind of like very wacky uh, monster movie kind of vibes that they were gonna play off." And Spielberg's like, "That's not gonna fly." So so it looks like in getting this original draft, that's kind of how Spielberg grounded it. Mm, and then yeah. Lucas is like, I don't like it. So then they have to compromise together. But in doing that, it's basically Spielberg dragging Lucas kicking and screaming to make something that at least feels like an Indiana Jones film. And yeah, Lucas yeah. at every turn trying to up the st- make it just that more bombastic than it needed to be. But you're totally right in the idea that the that like 78, 70, 80% of this script still feels like what Crystal Skull became. So ultimately, guys, I just want to ask the question do you think this version of this film would have been any good um do you think it would have been better than the crystal skull that we got what what are you what are our final thoughts the the one really uh thing that stood out to me in in this final chapter of this uh this version of it was that they do really get to enjoy that last moment in the temple or in the the final area which is that you get the time to breathe and and for the enemies and the goodies of the the goodies and the baddies to to take in the wonder of everything that's there for the aliens themselves or whatever you want to call them mummified uh things to to put forward that almost holy grail challenge of like what is it you choose do you choose correctly and there's just a little more time because that was a very rushed scene in the final film it was basically Kate Blanchett's character gets hoisted up and the heads explode and they all yeah. run out of there before it all goes yes. to, to hell whereas here we got a lovely moment where again I wish Indy had picked something a little more ambiguous or you wondered what it was that Indy you know the alien finds out thinks that Indy's the true hero so he needs to be let free with his friends or something along those lines but we just got to see bad guys get their comeuppance a little bit more and I really appreciated that because that was a big stick point for me in the original as for the rest of it there's good there's bad there's ups and downs uh yeah, yeah it's strange do i think it would have been any good no <laughs> yeah you're, you're, a hard, you're a hard no you're a hard no no there are good bits i i i totally agree with you guys the 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 idea that like what he wants is is marrying it's it's a nice emotional beat in a big climax where the other one didn't have that i think that's really good there are some good elements but a lot of the problems of Crystal Skull are still here with some new problems entirely <laughs> added on. Some things that I do really like, though, I think they treat Marion way better totally in this film. Totally agree. I think she's actually a really nice, well-rounded character. She goes, she goes through some changes. Agreed. She's a badass. I wish she didn't marry him in the end because she's too good for him, <laughs> but I, I do agree. It also does feel like Indy has chosen not to live adventure anymore. He, he has chosen to be with Marion and it does feel like an ending to Indiana Jones in that way um, mm. whereas I think the one we got was a bit more like oh it's just another adventure and yeah he's got married but yeah. he's still Will Mutt take Jones. the hat? No take it back No yeah. take it back Well exactly. you're right even having that ending in original Crystal Skull had the bit of like is this all over for Indy? He takes the hat and the theme plays and we get the little fanfare saying oh no this isn't the last time he'll go out there whereas you're right Eden the start of this one felt like Indy was already over the hill and mm. then he gets dragged on this adventure so for him to find a, a, a at the end to find Marion and to say, oh, thank God I can finally put my boots up and rest. It's like, it feels earned. It feels yeah. like that was the direction they wanted. Well, there's the just the one mystery that remains that they didn't answer. Does adventure still have a name? They oh. never told us. <laughs> oh, it still has a name, mate. <laughs> but it can't quite remember its name sometimes on good days. <laughs> on bad, it has good and bad days. That's all it <laughs> Well, we have come to the end of the cancelled movie report for Indiana Jones and the City of the Gods. We hope you enjoyed this episode and we would love it if you would subscribe, be it on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts or wherever you like to listen. That really helps us get discovered in the charts. It would also be terrific if you could leave us a five-star rating or most importantly of all, tell a friend. Someone like a, a Yuri, someone that you really trust, I think. <laughs> We're completely independent here at Council Movie Report, so that support it means the world to us. And if you do want to support us even more than that, you can come join us over on our newly launched Patreon. We've got a bunch of bonus stuff over there, including a brand new bonus podcast. Uh, come join us over there. It's a, it's a bunch of fun. 
Hey, what did you think of the movie and did we miss anything? We'd love to hear from you. You can always get in touch with us via cancelledmovies at gmail.com or at cancelledmovies on all of the socials. And maybe there's a cancelled movie report you've always wanted to hear. Why not let us know? Do you want us to cover, you won't believe this, there's a third Indiana Jones <laughs> alien movie <laughs> called Indiana Jones and the Saucer Men from Mars. We have the yeah. script. If you want us to cover it, let us know. I, I don't know whether I could do that again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah two, two might be enough indies for us. Uh, so let us know. There's a form in the description and we can always cover things for you. In fact, that's what we like to do. Gus, thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you, mate. It's been an thank adventure, you, not unlike one that Indiana Jones himself would go on. <laughs> but uh, it, for your spin-off, of course, you're the short round of this. And for your spin-off, where would people find you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I uh, do a variety show online, which is at backpocket.gg. I do that with a couple of uh, old TV hosts that we used to do a lot of video game work, but we um, we love talking about video games, movies, podcasts like this as well. So, uh, yeah, jump along there and you can find what we do there. And, uh, yeah, again, thank you, guys. This has been a, a privilege and an honor. It's a, a heap of fun. You've, you've, you've re... So you've re-emerged uh, my love for indie and the things I hate about it as well. So I'm not sure how I feel at the end of this. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us. I'm Michael Campbell. I've hosted and edited this episode at Eden Porter. He was my co-host as well. Thank you very much for having me. And we both produced the show. And of course, we do need to thank our wonderful oh, voice cast, so good. led by Chris Lum as Indiana Jones. And the, the rest of the cast are all listed down in the episode notes below. Now, make sure you're joining us next week because we're talking about another first draft movie. We're talking about Arnold Schwarzenegger returning in Robert Rodriguez's Predators. If you can't wait, here's a quick sneak peek. In deep space, they have just scored the ultimate bounty. Dutch is going to August 6. But the only thing more dangerous than their prisoner. What do you know about August 6? <laughs> I'll tell you when it's too late. Is what he is running from. There must have been some mistake. We shouldn't be here. From Robert Rodriguez. Everyone go! Go! His original vision brought to life. Round two, you fucking lizard sacks of shit! Well, you can go with us and live, or stay and die right now. You choose. Predators. But until then, take care.